Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel with another model that I made, another set piece that I will uh, increase upon so there will be more pieces with a similar style. As you can also see or as you could have also seen I uh, updated my uh, my full body suit a bit it now has the uh, now has um, more detailed finer and and uh, yeah legs and it covers the feet as well and yeah so I updated that a bit and then I worked on this new set piece which is a feather star armor so I finally after I don't know four five six iterations of trying this got to a place where I actually was able to make a feather like or looking uh, an armor that looks like feathers or actually um, a model that looks like it is multiple feathers. Um, I guess the same thing also works um, if you want to do for example scales um, should work basically the same. As you can see I've copied in the end part of the uh, model for a part of the uh, full body suit um, and right there I'm just uh, editing the base shape of those of, of the feathers a bit I'm adding a few more um, vertices so that I have um, beca because I need each and every one of these faces to become basically one feather so I've decided to um, reduce the smoothing down to zero. Right now I'm um, updating the um, the direction of the faces. This is something I will cover in one of the uh, still working on uh, tutorials. Um, and I will explain why this is important. Um, yeah, so the feathers in itself um, I have a more detailed way how to do this in a few seconds, but um, in essence, this is a combination of different tools that I already went over in the tutorials. If so, if you're interested in doing this yourself, um, I suggest watching the tutorial series. So here we go. I grabbed one of the faces, extruded it, and then extruded the side of this uh, face again used the welding tool to weld two of the edges together so that I have like a triangle sticking out or from the side of the extruded uh, face. I used the connection tool to um, make it additional rich, basically an additional um, yeah round of, of um, edges around the whole extruded part. You can see this in a second again before I then welded the edges on the far end of this so basically the broad edge that is still sticking in the middle of the model together um, there will be a tiny skip because um, hexagon crashed multiple times on this like every two or three um, iteration that I did that I crashed and I had to reload the whole thing so basically um, saving after every feather was a, an, an absolute must. Um, yeah, but this is also why um, I'm jumping a bit ahead in a few seconds. Um, yeah, but this is basically how I achieved the feather look by these overlapping uh, triangles that then get smoothed down to this feathery look that you see right there. Uh, next thing was um, just adding if well, what I just um, the next thing was adding um, a bit of details, a bit of um, jewelry, a bit of um, ornaments uh, to the whole thing. Um, I wanted the focus still on the uh, feathery breastplate, um, so I didn't work it that uh, so I didn't uh, work out the details of this piece that much I will probably go I will likely go into more detail 
for the upcoming shoulder parts of this which I will uh, which we will see uh, me make um, there will be a hip piece again that you will see me make and I don't know yet if I will make a, sev sev a separate set of um, of uh, footwear for this but what I will definitely do is go uh, in one of my next videos some sometime this month I will go over all the uh, soles so wedge and and high heels and whatever other soles I have um, for feet uh, for for shoes and um, we work all of them so that I have a better base for making footwear in the future okay back to the model um, yeah I took a few inspirations again from a lot of places Deviant Art um, Pinterest which is basically just the gathering space for a lot of other sites, um, art station, um, basically just looking around for some interesting uh, takes and uh, yeah, stealing the best ideas. Um, yeah, so uh, this is the neck piece, basically what holds the whole thing, uh, the whole metal on the shoulders is goes around the uh, neck, as you can see. Um, again, this is this is a fantasy armor. This is not meant to be protective. This is not meant to be um, functional armor in any real sense of the thing. I mean, this uh, this wouldn't be. I mean, this at least it is light, um, but it's not very effective in terms of um, um, protection. And actually, I, I don't think you can put this on. I mean, there will be another part. Um, right under the breasts uh, that will come in a bit and I guess you can't really put the whole thing on so basically it's like um, well to the body and let it stay there um, but yeah for our purposes it uh, works just fine <laughs> yeah you can see that I'm um, adding a few extra lines with the connect tool here to just uh, make sure that the whole thing goes around the clothing though I actually left in um, some of the fabric from the uh, from the full body suit um, yeah made sure that there isn't too much clipping and then I worked on the fabric part of this uh, which is what I'm doing here um, just a bit of fine-tuning uh, with all the uh, clipping and yeah this is uh, basically this is the first draft I, I mean uh, I guess I will actually come back to this and uh, add the sleeves again because I think it gives it a bit more detail um, and then work the shoulder pads or the pauldrons ab um, above the sleeves yeah, the second, uh, uh, the the second, uh, uh, yeah, other set of the bodies, obviously, just copy pasted, and then I went about to do the, uh, yeah, the other metal part that I promised you, um, which is uh, under the breast, basically supports the whole thing from underneath, uh, kind of. Um, again, this is again um, inspiration from different uh, pictures that I found that I found interesting enough to uh, do and this is uh, also yeah a lot of the extrusion tools so um, this is basically one of the tools that after I found it I really uh, started to appreciate and use because it helps you so much with um, adding finer details, adding depth uh, and stuff. Um, again, I'm looking to uh, fix the direction of the faces. This is basically important if you import this, for example, in Unity or something. Um, Unity checks which direction your faces go. And it usually makes your faces opaque in one direction. So basically, if you see it from behind, uh, you, can what, you can look through it. If you see it from the front, you see the applied color. And since I had uh, problems with that before when I tried to import something into Unity, um, I decided to, whenever I'm doing something like this, at least check the um, 
the sides. So basically what I learned from this is that I have to touch up on my um, uh, on my uh, full body suit which apparently has the uh, faces um, yeah looking on the inside. Um, yeah, this is something that will just take me basically a few minutes to just uh, go in there, um, set all the faces on the right direction, and then I can work with that. Yeah. Um, and that's basically the whole thing. I'm playing around a bit with the smoothing tool here to unsmooth part of these uh, tiles so it has some edges without being completely uh, jagged and a final detail that I wanted to add obviously uh, for those who know me would uh, have uh, probably guessed this by now that this was coming um, a few chains to just have a little hanging jewelry that I will actually not rig um, so I thought about do I want to rig this part um, with like four or five six um, uh, uh, bones, but I basically decided against it, just uh, copy pasting uh, the whole uh, jewel from the top uh, and uh, yeah, which which I didn't have, which I didn't give a UV map before, so I'm doing this now. And after I uh, edit the um, jewel, I was like, okay, no, I'm just. Uh, adding two more chains to secure it to the sides and uh, then I don't have to rig anything. Yeah, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the render uh, and see you guys around.